What's up, everybody? This is Tasha. Welcome to Sunday Tea and Talk, which is actually kind of early, but your girl is tired. And so because I have to teach in the morning, I have um, I need to go ahead and jump on so that I'm off and ready. So hey to everybody coming in. Hey to everybody coming in. Happy Sunday. Um, I don't want to drag this conversation on, but I just wanted to add something to it. Um, if you are a Pilates person or near anybody's um, Pilates person, we are basically at the point where the Pilates industry feels like it's on fire right now. And basically what's, what's happening is that the power structure is coming down. And so I think it's fair to talk about what the power structure really is. And I mean, we know in general, it's basically racism. I mean, let's just call it what it is. But how did we even get to this point? Because I don't think that people really understand um, the dynamics behind being a Pilates teacher. And it has, um, it has more to do with studying for 500 hours, which is a lot. Um, in general, in general, Pilates trainings were in $45, $5,000. And here's the structure. So you you take, and, and maybe I'm just giving my story. So basically you take off time. My training was out of town. I had to take off time to go to the training, which means I was commuting from an hour and a half away to go take my training, right? And then there's the study time. And then there's the observation time. And then there's the student teaching time. All of this stuff that you're not getting paid for, right? And so because you're not really taught the business of Pilates when you get in, you're not taught the business. What you're basically trained to do is work for someone else, pretty much. Um, and hey, Martin, and I, I want to drop something that you said, Martin, the other day. I actually made a, a note of it about teaching a man to fish. I think what has happened is that we've been given fishes, fish, y'all. I, I have two whole degrees and, and just totally messed that up. Um, but given a fish to say, here, here's Pilates, but not like you're ever in a position to work for yourself. So the privilege behind it is that in order to even have the space to have a career in Pilates, there has to be some type of background going because you have got to have the money. You have to have the money to take this training and you have to have the money to create the space in order to work on your craft. Then you have to find somewhere to teach. So when you put that with the fact that now you've done all of this work to have this profession and now you got to fight with people who feel like you don't belong and like Pilates belongs to them. I'm going to say it again. You have, there's a different fight regardless of you having the best choreography, you have the best flows, your students know you, but the Pilates industry in general is still a fight because there's a power structure that hasn't been torn down yet or even hasn't been approached. So one of the questions, and I was talking to Michelle, she's not here yet, but I was talking to Michelle and I said, my question is, where were you and your family in the 1950s? So in the 1950s, my, my dad was born in 1950. My mom was born in 1953. They want to be the gatekeeper. Exactly. So Martin, if my dad was born in Selma, like Selma, Alabama, like Edmund Pettus Bridge, like people getting beat over the head with nightsticks because they wanted to vote. Yes, that's Selma. My mother was born in Sunflower, Mississippi, which is basically dirt. Um, and so we're looking at born into poverty. My, my, my mom is one of nine. My grandmother was one of 12. You know, my great grandmothers are all from families that there are 12 or 13 children. So if my family is basically trying to survive, Hey, Michelle, if my family's basically trying to survive, um, they don't have time to do Pilates. They don't even know what Pilates is, you know? So there's this big fight about who owns Pilates when people are, are literally struggling to, to, to make a living? Like, why are we fighting about this? And so, yeah, Martin, you know what? Jump on, jump on. Let's talk about this because I think it's important to say that there was a hierarchy already set up 
And the idea of people who've always been in power wanting to now con control power um, because there's an uprising because people who are unseen, unheard, um, undervalued, underpaid. Now we're at the point that we're like, hey, we want to sit at the table. And you're like, well, it's always been this way. Well, it's 2021 and we're not having it. Right. So, again, I don't want to get in a lot of detail about them because I think they are getting too much airtime as it is. But um, I do want to talk about the spaces that we're now creating. So now that we know that Pilates, the structure is full of racism and now we know that it is basically elitist. What are those of us who are doing? Um, what are those in who are in the field like like what's up now? You know, like, what are our next steps? That's, re that's really the question. I think we've, um, I think we've fought a lot um, about the wrong things. Hey, I know you're ready. I know you got something to add. I know Man, I've, um, add. yeah, I'm debating whether to raise something because it's interesting that this is, everything's out of front right now with uh, what happened with Nikki and, and all these different things. But it's, yeah, it's, it's true, right? We, we get to this place where now, they still want to be the gatekeeper to some degree, right? So I don't know. It's There's a lot of uproar about what's happening at this moment, but at the same time, it's also a great indicator of where we stand and where we need to move next. Yes. Yeah. Um, I don't think that anybody can deny that racism exists. They can lie to themselves, but mm -hmm. on a true level, they can't deny that. And so... Pilates is basically representative of, I mean, hello, is this America? Like, you know, right. so it's been set up in, in that system. And now the whole idea, like if you think that, and I, I mentioned this before, my, grand, my great grandmother was in her 60s when she marched from Selma to Montgomery. You know, like I'm not that far removed. Like both of my parents were teenagers when black people were granted the right to vote. Like, and so... There's a lot of undoing that we have to have. And Pilates, right. because somebody wants to throw Kathy Grant out there. I know, but Kathy Grant was one Black person, and there are a million Black people, you know, going on. So because Kathy Grant had access, and thank God she did, mm -hmm. doesn't mean so many Black people had access. Because I can't see Bull Connor and Selma, you know, saying, we're going to beat you over the head, but y'all can go to Pilates. Like, yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah, man. But this is the whole thing too. Like I, I keep saying the last little while, my, my message has been that Pilates is a movement. It's not just a business. We're not just this, there's not just these, this elite elders who gatekeep and then no one else is allowed to do it. We make Pilates so small that it's in this little silo, but it's movement, but it's fitness, but it's health, it's wellness. It's such a big thing. You can't mm -hmm. stop me from doing it. Right. <laughs> like what's, what's the deal? So I mean, right. if I can't learn from you, I can learn from somewhere else. Like, I think yeah. my perspective is different being in Canada too, because I'm watching you guys blow up about the PMA. There was never any ROI for the PMA, PMA for me in the first place. I never signed up, never went to a conference, never did anything with them. So I'm watching this go and I'm like, I didn't need them in the first place. Right. <laughs> so, and so, you know, that's the whole thing. So, I mean, I was doing this without them. I move on without them. So what's the deal? The deal is the fact that they're now doing things that are destructive to the industry, destructive to humanity. And if there's no ROI on it for me in the first place, it's now destructive. So there's definitely no ROI like for myself professionally to be in that place. There's so many other places you can find community that it's, it's, it's becoming more and more irrelevant. Like they, they used to be the downtown core they're not even in the suburbs anymore. Like they yes. are so rural. They are not central to what we do anymore whatsoever. Yeah. But we've been convinced, you know, part, part of the thing is that me watching people lose their power. Yes. You know, it's like giving their power over to the PMA. Like the PMA is like God, you know, and it is very, um, and I understand. And I mean, this is for anybody who has belief in something. It is very hard to take down that that picture, right? But, you know, I think the thing now where the shift is, is that people who were basically sitting back watching this, knowing that maybe it wasn't, they didn't know if it was right or wrong, it wasn't even, and they knew that, mm -hmm. they knew that. 
Yes. And people have the, the PMA didn't just become full of races in the past six months. Right. I mean, let's just be clear about that. But when I was going through training, I remember someone asked me, are you going to get PMA certified? And literally I said, what the hell is PMA? You know, and then my instructor, when I, our lead instructor asked months later and I said, well, I mean, well, what's the benefit? Like, do I need you to, um, to call myself a Pilates teacher? And I got caught up in that. Right. Exactly. You know? Yeah. I got yeah. caught up in that. But like now is a time that, that you're right. People who surrendered their power without even knowing it yeah. are now saying, okay, now I have the courage, yeah. number one, to speak on my own, because I will tell you that when I didn't know what was happening, I got on the phone and asked Missy, <laughs> first of all, I need to be informed because I'm not just following the sheet because everybody's jumping off. Right. You, you want to be informed about what's happening. Mm -hmm. But is that the Maya Angelou quote? When you know better, do better. So all the people who've been paying the PMA all of these years, you're sitting back watching this and you're quiet. Don't inbox me your support. Yeah. Don't inbox me. Right. Put yourself on the line. If you really want change, stop being like the closet supporter. Because what that means is that, hey, girl, I'm kind of with you, but I don't want to disrupt. What I have going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the, I think it was just like, you know, as a growing up, I'm sure you heard at some point too, right? You have to work twice as hard to get half as far, right? As a black person. So I think about like the, you know, any kind of organization that we see these things going on with right now, it's the same thing. My mindset was, I'm gonna have to grind anyways. I didn't figure that even if I was part, like Michelle put it in the, in the, in the comment there too, even when the PMA was at its central and height and all these things were good, we still were at their target market. I still had to work just as hard. So I could have had every accolade for them. And I'm still gonna have to face the same issues to be able to grow my business. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's on one, like, I don't know. So I, I'm trying to be careful with my words, but the point for me is that like, it really isn't central to what I'm doing. They're not paying my mortgage anyways. So we, we fight for them for humane to make sure that we're on the same page and that everyone is being heard. But when it's time to leave, it's time to leave. Yeah, and, and, it, and it's time to leave because I, again, I think, and people won't admit it, again, inbox supporters, there's an elitism to Pilates anyway. And so we're talking about all of these, these power structures in the Pilates field, because you may be an instructor, you may be a Pilates instructor, but I'm PMA instructor. Right. You know, there's, there's an elitism with having that title. And now people are distraught because the title is worthless. Mm. Like it's, it's completely worthless. And to watch people battle over something that's basically getting ready to be extinct, when do we get back to the movement? Like if we know that there's a that there's a that there's a power structure issue, let them work that out. I'm not saying right. we shouldn't call that, but I don't want to keep spending my time that I could be bringing Pilates where we already know that Pilates is separate from a lot of people because it is elite. Mm -hmm. When do we say? Okay, we know that they're like that, but how do I get back to the people? Like, when do we just start teaching movement again and basically forget them? Withdraw, don't pay them, be done with it. Right, right. The, um, I was very conscious of that. Like, with, I've said this so many times before that the same day that I think the PMA sent out their whole thing about, you know, uh, resignation and this, all those different things was the same day that Tracy put out her Plate best of. Okay. Right. And she put that best of Plate, and people were being celebrated. And I love the fact there was people, voices that we never heard of. It mm -hmm. wasn't the same elite that was getting recognized. She really right. put target on new people celebrating all those different trainers and, and not new people, people we have been doing this for 20 years that we may never have right. heard of. Because right. of the color of their skin or because of their location, because they're not in the US or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. so I purpose for that whole week, I'm not talking about anything other than giving these people space and celebrating these these voices. It's one thing to jump on this bandwagon and attack over there. It's another thing to elevate other people so that this voice yes. gets drowned out by all the good things that are happening in our world. Right. There's so much good happening. Like, there's such a small corner of the fitness industry. We forget they are minuscule in the whole fitness industry. So why not spend 
some of that energy, celebrate people who are doing good. And like you said, just let them just do their thing over there. Yeah, the PMA is the Pilates Method Alliance. Someone asked what the PMA is. And and here's the thing. I, if my, I almost if grabbed my, my microphone to take a drink. <laughs> it's in the wrong space. So, so here's the question. You could address you. It's all good. You, um, the question is, and then what are, we're talking about such a small number of people on this board. Like we are so powerful as a community. And what I feel like, and I hate, I mean, I really hate that George Floyd had to die for people to even know we existed. Thank you. You know, I mean, let's just put that out there too. It's not that, you know, and I have, I have told people, I am not an overnight success. Stop saying that. Yes. Stop saying that. Right. I have been in the industry since 2005. Stop saying that. Yep. You know, and yep. so there is a difference between, and Eric and I were talking about this the other day, about elevation and tokenism. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, again, when you come to me with an opportunity, is this about both of us? I mean, I'm okay if you're getting some kickback from it and you're trying to elevate me, or are you trying to get people off of your butt because you know you're racist and now you're scrambling, which is basically what happened with the PMA. And their loss, because they had four fantastic, strong, powerful women mm -hmm. that they lost. Mm -hmm. They lost. And so then the question becomes, how do we support them? You know, because someone asked me about it. I said, let me tell you something. I don't care what happened because I'm not getting ready to cross them to agree with you. I have their back. Yeah. Period. Period. Right. Because they're my representative on that board. But again, how do we get these? And, and I saw, I don't know if you saw what went down today. Today, no. With, no one, with, with one, of the, one of the members that they're a very strong um, connection that they had basically walked away from them. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Yeah, okay. yeah. yeah. Can, we, so, can we talk about that or like, can we not yeah, talk about Yeah, I mean, you know, let, let's talk about it because <laughs> honestly, I didn't even know who this woman was. I had to inbox Michelle and say, who in the hell is that? Yeah, um, yeah. Sorry, am I hijacking some of the time here? Like I was just like- No, 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 let's, let's do it. Let's, let's do it. Yeah. Um, and, and so, again, we're talking about where the money is. So if I withdraw from you, I not only have you basically helped my business, but now I'm saying forget that because now you're affecting what may be my bottom line. So you're out, you know, right. which is the importance of us learning to build our own structures. Right. Absolutely. I'm... Uh... I, I, I saw that happen and you know, it was Nikki Taylor Stewart Grayson that mentioned that she had her post and you can see it that said that she is no longer a, a, a connected with Deborah Lesson. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. So I'm curious to see who advised Deborah Lesson to do that. Is there anything out there that could be the reason why that might even be a good reason why there's no positive optics on this whatsoever because the people who are feeding into you have the power right. you see what i'm saying yeah. so and, and and that and that's the way it goes Ow. it's just like we can just say this was um you know it was just time to go no what happens is the people who feed into that woman's business are like we can't have this right which is a which is the same exact thing that we've just been going through as people, as a people, as black right. people right. in general. You know, like I, I just started reading a book about why did I just forget his name? But anyway, it was about a, a, a husband and wife who um, were basically killed by a bomb that was put under their bed. The most powerful, this was 1952, the most mm. powerful bomb since Hiroshima, right? Yeah. It's Harry and oh my gosh, but it's called the bomb that was heard around the world. Yeah. And so if you think somebody is willing to take you out because you, you're not asking for theirs, you're asking for yours. Yeah. And yeah. somebody's willing to take you out just because the whole idea of me and you being on the same playing field in any way is disruptive to my way of life. Right. So when you hear that this happens, do you shrug your shoulders like, thank you, now we know where you stand? Or are you <laughs> like, you are weak you have no courage to stand up for people like 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 what's your, initial, what's your what's your yeah what's your initial reaction to it all all of the above 
And, you know, my, my thing was, one of the things that crossed my mind was, okay, well, how do we get in her, in her corner and elevate her? Because that's, exactly. that's a professional hit, you know? But it's like, okay, so maybe she doesn't have your back, but there are people who do. Is it a so, professional hit, really, though? Um, if, if you've established yourself through a certain line, maybe temporarily, you know, because this is what you've been connected to. This is what people know you for. However, uh, yeah. however, I'm with you because I've only been fired from one job in my life. And it was the best thing, the best thing that ever happened to me. Yep. Um, and so, again, but now what you've also done is put her in front of all of these eyes that hadn't even seen her before. Yes. You know, um, right. and so that's, you know, one of those things about, I have been in a situation with somebody who really didn't like me. And because they talked about me so much, people started looking for me. Mm -hmm. And when they found me, they were like, oh, mm -hmm. she's cool. I ended up with a couple of jobs like that. Yes. You know, and so again, now, how do we begin to create, because Pilates is money, which, and money is power. Mm -hmm. You know, how do we get people into situations like, you know, you talking to people and mentoring people about owning a business, like, and not just the Pilates business, it's a movement business, and it's a business. Like, it is so much bigger, like you said, than the word Pilates. Like, right. Pilates is making, the word Pilates is making people nuts right now. Like, yeah. Yes. The, um, and what you're saying there, too, like, this is such a win for Nikki, simply because of her integrity. Yes. Right, our yeah. integrity is what propels us forward. Imagine Deborah Lesson on Monday morning saying, "Whatever happened to Nikki? I let her go, or I'm not. Why? Why? Please tell us why. Like, what's, what's, I'm, I'm like right. <laughs> where I'm ready to hear a good why for that. Yeah, yeah. There's and, no and good why. No, but when you feel like you're in charge, you don't have to answer to anybody, which is why PMA is in the position that they are now because they haven't had to answer anybody. They've been at that board, in that boardroom, doing what they want, making up all the rules, and there was no checks and balances system or nobody that was willing to basically shove the door open, you know? And now you put all of your stuff and not just once, repeatedly. Now, Sincere Ignorance, Sincere Ignorance, the book you referenced, oh, it is, it is so good. Um, sincere Ignorance, and conscientious stupidity. What Martin Luther King says is the most dangerous. <laughs> yes. The most dangerous in the world because you've never had to face the fact that you're racist. That's sincere ignorance because you don't know any better. Yeah. You don't know any better, which is, right. which is sad, but it is sincere ignorance. And then you came out in conscientious stupidity because you knew you didn't know, but you yeah. tried to speak like you did know, like, like we didn't know the difference well that's that's the dangerous part because like the ignorance piece it could be geographical yeah absolutely right like absolutely. i mean there could be there's so many justifiable reasons for being ignorant but what you do with that ignorance is dangerous yeah and to to unveil again i live in alabama um and <laughs> i i work for someone who said you know her her parents like she's in her 50s so she was raised in Montgomery, where the bus boycott was. Yeah. Your parent, your parents, that stuff is embedded in them. The only way we're going to get rid of racism is to, first of all, burn off everybody who right. is from that time and start right. over. Right. But, you know, you don't realize that you're carrying these ideas because if you've never had to interact with Black people, you've never been underprivileged, you've never been underserved, you live in this cloud. And it scares you. You think people are coming for your way of life. If I ask you, and I'm telling you, I want more representation, how does that affect your paycheck? Like, right. you know, um, and, and I, I think that in general, as a society, that's what we're struggling with. Yes. I, I want control. I want to be better than you. I still right. want, there's another book by, um, it's Irene. Oh gosh, she's a. Um, it's called the caste system. Okay. Yeah. Isabel Wilkerson, the mm -hmm. caste system. You know, we're and and there's a caste system in Pilates the same way. I mean, it's it's reflective of what's actually happening. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, I th what you're saying there is so true. But when you say that, like, 
I want more representation. And then for white people to feel threatened by that because they think that there's this vacuum and that if I give, if, if they're going to get more representation, that means that I get less representation. There's a scarcity and this sense of like, I need to hold on to what I got, but we don't, we fail to realize that this market is so far from saturated. Like, you know, like and I, when uh, Leslie, Leslie Logan and, and Brad are doing their, their agency stuff, and I was just on the call with them a minute ago, one of the things that Brad said the first time I heard him talk, which hit me was, there's 3 billion people on this planet, right? So, and everyone has, there's enough people to go around. So if we think that if I'm gonna get mine means that you're not gonna get any, any more, then you're completely mistaken. Like it's, it's just not true. So we don't have to be threatened by someone else's prosperity. Right, it's, it's not pie. Somebody it's, said like, it's right. not pie. Yeah. Um, you know, I, again, and, and I may have mentioned this last week, I remember when I graduated from grad school and my mother like had to have a copy of my degree, like she carbon copied it, put it in her office. And I was like, for what? And I said, everybody I know has a master's degree. And I kind of just put that to the side, right? Except I'm the first person in my family to go to a four year college. My mom went to a, a, a junior college. You know, there are people in my family who can't even read or write right now, yeah. you know? And so I dismissed that believing because of my circle, everybody had a master's degree. So in Pilates, because we're all on top of each other, you know, we believe that the field is saturated. Mm -hmm. And if you're in the spotlight, it means I can't be like there are if somebody likes my page and likes your page, I mean, they can do both. <laughs> you know what I mean? Both. Like <laughs> you can literally do both. And there is nothing taken away from you. And there's nothing taken away from me. Right. But we want to we don't want to address what I thank you for posting that. We don't want to address what we really feel like is being taken away. And that is our power. And we don't want to, nobody wants to say that, right? you know, but that's what it is. And, and, and that's trickling through lots of Pilates teachers. And it's not just the PMA board. I think that's worth saying as well, <laughs> um, that this is not a PMA board issue. Right. Thank you. Yeah. It's easy to make it that cause it's so glaring, but you're right. Yeah. It's, it's, it's super easy. And I think that, Again, now is the time. Like I, I, I looked at Kevin's uh, letter today. Yeah, just read that. Yeah. Um, and that's what I'm looking for. That's who. Those are people that I want to work with. That you're not in my inbox, you know, crying and telling me your whole life story. And I'm not that interested. What are you saying out in front? Mm -hmm. You know, are you willing to put your stuff on the line for what's right? You know, we're going to be attacked no matter what we say or do. I mean, I could sit here and, you know, sing NWA and go out there and teach a fantastic class. And I'm still going to be judged no matter what I do. Right. You know, going back to what you said about. And I think if you a lot of black Pilates teachers that I know, a lot of fitness people, we all have multiple hustles like yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Pilates is just not is not our only jam. Why? Because of what you said. I'm an NWA. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but because of what you said, always feeling like you have to be twice as good to even be seen as average. Right. You know, but that's, that gives us leverage, though, I feel like, because, again, I think what all of this has done is, first of all, connect us more to each other, that we begin to have a collective voice as well as individuals. And that's scary. Yeah. Right. To people. It is scary. And yeah. you know, the funny thing is too, like, and like you're saying, I just hear that. I hear that on another level because like, it's good to have all these different hustles, but it's also good to have a niche. And yeah. I think that because we have all these different hustles, because we've had to, we don't spend enough time diving into one thing to be the authority on this thing. In a, in a way. Um, right. And I can, I can see that, but, but here's the other thing. And I, I don't really call, I mean, Technically, when I have to, are you a Pilates teacher? Yes, I'm a Pilates teacher. Mm -hmm. Here's what I do. I get people to move. And sometimes, so if you think where, where I teach, I'm the only black Pilates instructor 
and our 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 black population is increasing. But again, I've taught at yoga, Pilates bar, and I was the only one, you know. And so, um, what I do as far as having different things is because I I cannot go to my homegirls and be like, hey, who haven't exercised in ten years? Hey, we're gonna do this thing called Pilates. They're like, what is Pilates? Yes, yeah, yeah. You know, and yeah. so. But I think the things that we learned along the way is what help us create bridges where mm-hmm. we can not just throw it and be like, oh, you have to have the Lululemon, the bag, and drive the BMW before you can come to this class. What we're saying is we've taught people in other modalities. We have other yes. things to offer you to bridge you in instead of making you feel like it's all black or all white. Either yes. you're going to be able to do the, the teaser or we mm-hmm. kicking you out. Like... <laughs> Yeah, I know. yeah, exactly. But there's yeah. a different level too. Like, I, this is the business owner side. I think this kind of came out last time when I was talking to you. Wouldn't it be good? Let me paint a picture for you. Wouldn't yeah. it be good if you were in a spot where you owned the building that had the fitness thing and had other stuff in it, and then you were free to go in and just teach one or two classes, and then you have all your white instructors and have all your black instructors and whoever it is. You may be the only black person there but you are free to teach your classes and do your thing. But then in the back of mind, knowing that you actually own the property that you're teaching that class for X amount of dollars in. Oh, so that's this, a whole mood. <laughs> that's a whole mood, right? So what I'm yeah. saying is like, yeah. we can have that freedom to have our hustles, but we own the hustles. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, that's a whole mood. And, and that's, I so like, I, that's why I like, that's the sort of thing that I want to think about where I don't care what your perception of it is. I could be in this class and you could perceive me as, well, she's the black girl who's a really good dancer, so I'm gonna I'm gonna take her class. But then she also owns a building that I just walked into that to take that class that I chose to grace her with my presence in. Right. Like you know what I mean? So right. it doesn't matter what they think about me because I own this whole gig. Yes. Yes. And that but that's what I'm talking about as far and I mean me and you have had this conversation privately about creating those spaces. Like it's a it's a whole thing about how we flip it because that's that's power. Michelle opened her studio, that's power. Right. She can go in and do whatever she wants. Right. She's the boss. That's power. But I feel like in the industry and and I want to say publicly that I have been I have really some people have really stepped up for me and I do not discredit that. Mm -hmm. But back to what you said about giving a man a fish Mm -hmm. and teaching them to fish, you know, being trained to work for somebody the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. That's still you playing the power game. Right, right. You know, if you have your own, talk to me about having your own instead of training me to come work for you. Like if you're really an ally. Right. And I think that's where I think that's where this whole game is going because now, again, sincere ignorance, you know, like I grew up in the projects. Nobody in my family, I mean, unless you count my grandmama owning a tavern before I was born. But that's a whole nother thing. Um I never knew anybody in my family who owned a business. I never, I never saw that. You know, I was just telling somebody the other day, maybe I didn't become a lawyer because I didn't see it. The first lawyer I saw was Claire Huxable. Thank you. You know, and so, (laughs) and so now I'm 45 and feel like I'm playing catch up, Mm -hmm. but it's not, but it's not too late. Yes. You know, um, and, and, and learning about these things and learning where the real money is. Because I'm going to tell you, when I'm 80, I'm trying to sit up and collect a check. Like, I, do, I am not going to be teaching Zumba. I am yes. not going to be bouncing all over the place. But also, also to have something that I can put in my kids' hands. Right. That I know is going to help prepare them for the future. Forget these classes, you know. And I'm like, years ago, I told someone, if you come to my funeral and all you can offer my kids is, you know, she really taught that booty roll really fun. You know, like the fact that I killed myself teaching for someone else does not, doesn't do anything for my kids. Right. You know, how am I setting them up for, fun, for the stability that I didn't have? Because now they can see this, what I couldn't see living in in the project but i mean shout out to claire huxable because it was it was all good my life was more like good times (laughs) like honestly you know dad working all the time and you know it was like you were working so hard just to be considered 
not, I mean, you're not dirt poor, but maybe you're the working class, you know, to have two parents that have full-time jobs and we still couldn't afford insurance. Like that's real life. Mm -hmm. And so to think about, I, I think that's also where our power is, is that not only are we changing the norm from what we see in the Pilates world, we're changing what our kids are going to walk into. All of this work is important. Absolutely. This, I think this what's cool, cool about our conversations too, Tasha, is that we have such different live, like life experiences, but we're still mm -hmm. headed towards the same end goal. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I, well, Martin, I think that all of us, honestly, are more alike than we are different. But it yes. was like you said, it's that scarcity mentality. Like you're going to miss out on something because Tasha has 10,000 followers. And I said, do you know what happens? When you get 10,000 followers, they said, what? Nothing. Like, okay, I mean, the swipe, the swipe up link is cool, but I still had to go to work. I mean, literally, there right. is nothing magical happening. And if we're spending our time paying attention to other people's numbers, other people's classes, who's liking their posts, like, what are you doing for you in your business? Yes. Right. So that's, that's, that's the question. Like, at this point, where do we, what kind of work do we start putting in now? Because the tide turns with us. Forget PMA for a second. You know, the tide I forgot what turns, like 20 minutes ago. Right. <laughs> so the tide, <laughs> the tide turns with what we're actually doing mm -hmm. and not what we're just actually going on people's posts saying the PMA sucks. I mean, great. We know that. Now what? Yeah. I didn't even give them that airtime. I'm just like, okay, well, like, I, I honestly, I have not given them even that airtime. There's too many good things happening in this world to, to worry about that. Yeah, so good stuff. Talk about the, the networking event. Talk about that, because we have Pilates people on here, and they should catch My up. My friend, that was so fun. I, I am so tired. <laughs> <laughs> I bet, I bet. I, bet. I, I just came to work to kind of just get my, my stuff done for like to set up for tomorrow. But it was awesome. Like that was, we had 96 people registered for it. And people just flowed through over 300 people connected and had conversations. It was like a video speed dial, speed, uh, speed networking, speed date, speed dating type event. And the whole point was just to get to know people. And, you know, I just actually, since I had this moment too, I had a good conversation with someone who was running a conference later this year, and they were concerned about with me running a free event, how that was going to impact the rest of the industry's paid events later this year. Valid question, really, really valid, valid question. Because if we set something free as a low standard, then we're not going to, we're gonna expect everything else to be free. Um, so the reason why I position it as such is I made it free sponsors paid to have their space and that is your get to know them spot. That's where you get to meet people. Now go learn from them, invest in learning from them. If I'm having a workshop, my workshops in, in March and you never heard of me. And now because we had this two minute, con this five minute conversation, speed networking, you know that I'm going to do, um, Pilates for aging older adults and you know they have two people on your roster and you know me now is totally worth paying two hundred dollars for that workshop because you trust that the person that is teaching it actually is a legit person because you just had this quick conversation with them so don't get in the mindset that because this is free everything for the rest of the year from everyone else is going to be free pay for people's stuff like this is the time when if like you don't try and get a hookup like this is not a time to like find that get that free thing invest in people's workshops invest in their stuff buy their books, whatever it is, that's your point to just fast track that getting to know and trust them so that you can invest in the piece. And that's really the position I wanted that, that core connections and networking piece to be. Yeah, and I, but, I, but I think that's important. And so there is a, a large thing, and, and Lawrence Biscontini has a hashtag called Fitness Works, you know, that it's like about instructors shouldn't do things for free. Here's the thing, we got, we got a couple of things going on. Because initially, I did some free classes, but also realized that that, that was my niche right yes. there. My community, that was my niche or whatever. And um, people, and let me say me, I'm not going to say people. If I want to take your class, I don't care if there are 10, 20 free events in the world. If I'm invested in you, like you just said, if I'm invested in you, 
Yep. You know, because I don't want the 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 dollar to deter. I don't think what I think what you did gave people the opportunity to now recognize, like you said, recognize my first person was Benjamin Degahart. Yes. I was like, fan girl, you know what I mean? <laughs> but yes. he he didn't know yeah. I existed. Okay, yeah. yeah. You know, and, and and so that type of thing. And I met um I can't remember her name and I think she's on here was a person that uh, does a, like, she's the body for a lot of your stuff. She lives not that far from you. Oh yes, um, Michelle Frank. Yes. 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 I, I met her, you know, we had a conversation about not classical versus contemporary, but what she liked about classical, we had a conversation. And so now just uh, connectsology, what are you doing with that? You know, um, but I think that's important. I don't think that that's going to take away from the education that I'm going to pay on because they weren't teaching me. It was like me and you sit here have, having coffee. And so again, but I, you know, does that, does that play into the scarcity mentality? Like you had something for free. So why are they going to pay to come, to come to mind? I'm, right, I mean, right, I right. guess, yeah, I, a little bit. Just, you know, that happens. And I had to I, I had to just have that conversation. See, this is how I position it. So I'm going to talk about your event at my event because I don't have a scarcity mentality. I'm confident that I, I want to have the biggest event as possible to point people to your event. Right. Right. Whereas and, they're and, thinking like, wait a minute, if he has this many people, no one's going to come to my event. No, no, no. This event is for you. My events are for you. Everyone out there, whatever I do is for you. Yeah. But you had 95 people. Like, how many people do Pilates in the world? Yeah. You know, right. you know what I mean? Like, yeah. um, again, it's it's scary. But but we we fear. I mean, I just think that 2020 in general put a lot of fear on people's backs. And I'm gonna just tell you the honest to God truth. The more I stopped feeling like I needed to perform, mm -hmm. the more I stayed in my lane and did taught my little three dollar classes to people. Who, who couldn't afford it or had never taken Pilates, blessed me in so in such a big way that I think I made more money in 2020 than I did somewhere else because I was willing to work, like you said, it's a connection thing. Yes. Can I send somebody to your stuff? Because I'm not doing it, you know? And um, there are times that people get, get, upset because in my inbox I don't I don't retweet or or repost anything that I'm not connected with or can't speak on. Yes. Um and so people see that as a crowd mentality and it's no I don't want to crowd my feet with your stuff. I don't know anything about you. You haven't talked to me before or anything. That's not a scarcity mentality. That's making sure that when my name is on something, people who trust me right. feel like okay, this is something worth looking at. And so it's not a, a hateful thing, even though people take it that way. But again, putting us in positions where we met each other, what are you working on? What do you do? You know, yes. let me check that out. Maybe it doesn't work for me, but maybe I'll inbox somebody else and say, hey, I heard this. This is what you're doing. Check out so-and-so. Right, yeah. Yep. I mean, I, yeah, I thought that's what it was for. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, it's, it's yeah, there's great connections there. I, I mean, I learned a lot. I, I've, I took a lot of it. It benefited me. Like, I wasn't just mm -hmm. sitting there, like, pulling switches and pressing buttons. I was actually yeah. in there meeting people. And, uh, yeah, great feedback. Really, really good feedback from it. Um, yeah, overall, I thought, it, I thought it went really, really well. I'm, I'm going to do another one of those. I'm going to do, do them quarterly based on the feedback. So we'll do another one in April. And um, I think it might keep it that high accessible, like, you know, maybe keep it free and just like maybe charge more for sponsors so I could have different people highlighted for their events and, and build yeah. it that way. There's got to be a way, right? I mean, like doing free classes is great, but like get someone to pay, pay for those free classes. Like how do we right. find, how do we find ways that we're still getting paid, but still be able to, so that's the true meaning of accessibility, right? Like we can't, like I can't make it accessible and then I starve. I need to make right. it. Right, you know right, I mean? like, oh. Yeah, that is, um, y yeah, um, <laughs> that is how I made my money. Yeah, yeah. Honestly. Um, I also feel like that you gave, you gave something at, at a time that if we're saying that we have each other's back, we needed that type of community event. Yes, yeah. And, and actually, there's one more thing I need to say with that too, that there was a lot of people that I recognized went to that event just because it was me. 
And I really, truly appreciate that. And the, the way, the mean, the, what I mean by that is there are people that I know are crazy busy, that time is like way too late for them because they're in Europe or it's like right in the middle of doing homework with their kids. And if it wasn't for the fact, or they're like super anxious about that and they're, they're antisocial and they're loving this quarantine because they could be by themselves. Yeah. There's a lot of people that just did it because it was me. And I just humbly want to say thank you for that because even though you did it quote unquote because it was me, you did it for your community. And the, the four people that you sat, you signed on and you talked with and then bounced, you know, even though it was on for four hours, you did 15 minutes that did make a difference in someone else's life. So if, if I was the reason that you went out there and did that for our community, thank you. I'm more than happy to be a scapegoat so that more people yeah. can touch um, yeah. and do that next time and do that for other people as well. Like, I mean, that's the sacrifice we need to make sometimes. And it really did empower someone and someone got to fangirl because they got to meet you or they got to meet like Jessica Valange or someone who was in there for like five minutes but in that five minutes they met someone who is like some student in the middle of nowhere and then Leslie Logan pops up right you know what I'm yeah. saying like I think it's it's weird to say this but Tasha like we have some influence and we don't consider ourselves famous but people look at us in a certain way yeah, that we need we need to carry that into those situations. And you know, it would be important if I would, like they would appreciate it if I was there. It would be nice if I reposted that, or it would be great. Like it, there's things that seem insignificant to us that are so massively significant to other people. So I, I'm really grateful for those who showed up uh, to be at the event because of that. Yeah, ab absolutely. Um, I I want to. Um kind of round out what somebody just asked and, and I think it was Miami Pilates I'm sorry I missed that about like how do we move the money around well here's the thing we know who has the money and who doesn't how are we creating the funnel so that like Leslie one of the things that Leslie Leslie says and, and let me just go ahead and give Leslie a shout out real quick because if you've never done the agency mini like that girl's about business business like business business <laughs> like straight up business business and if you yes. are looking about getting your business stuff in order you need to check her out but um you know it's to serve the poor but not be poor right and so it's how do we create the funnel like you said if sponsorships if you're here and i'm here how do you get me to a point where we're we're fu we're funneling like you said um if you believe in community then sponsor somebody to teach to the community sponsor somebody to do that um, that way, we're not just keeping it. Uh, and even though I know people like that, the elitism yeah. of Pilates, people like that. Yeah. But I, I think it's time for us, you know, our faces as people know us from different things, that now we can open the door when, when the door wasn't open. Yes. You know, we can even tell you what it is at this point, And then you find out there is so much excellence. Because I think that's the other thing is that I'm not looking for somebody to just put my face on something because I'm black. Mm -hmm. I need you to understand the excellence behind what it is that I do. Yes. And to, to have that, to have people say, I believe in you here. Let's meet in the middle again. I can supply you with this while you go out and do that. It's basically having each other's back. You know, it is. Yes. If, if somebody has a class and, and you happen to have the money, right? Maybe yes. I'm going to pay $30 because Martin's having a class. I can't go but I can certainly pay for somebody else to go. Right, yes. Well, we could ask our clients to do that. Like we have people that are that, that have that you know disposable income to do that, but we don't ask as well. I did. <laughs> there you go. I, but when, when the whole Black Lives Matter thing blew up and y'all talking about accessibility, here's what I said. Who would like to sponsor a black woman to, to come to my Pilates class? Yes. That's it. Put your money where your mouth is. And it wasn't about me making money. It was about making that connection. How do we move the money around? Maybe they weren't going to pay for it because they've never heard of Pilates ever in their life. But I'm saying I was able to contact probably 20 something women and say, I have a space that has been made available to you. Amazing. Would you like to come and attend my class? Yes. You know, and, and so I think that's how I think that's how we move. We move the money around. You know, the movers and shakers have to step mm -hmm. up. Yeah. And we have to be willing to, to be that, be shift our conduit. Yeah, yeah we're, the, we're exactly. the conduit for that. Yeah, absolutely. Exactly, exactly. And That's I, a and good I, mindset. Like, we need to, yeah. we need to, like, we, you need to talk on that some more. Because I think that that, that is a, the piece that we, 
we don't get over ourselves enough to make those to make that ask right because we're afraid to get a no and we're we're yes. cautious we don't have the words you know all those different things so like the more that you make that up and you normalize that that that's going to happen more so it's really good yeah and it was you know there was a lot of stuff that i have done over the summer that um i did behind the scenes yeah. you know yeah. because literally there were people because i didn't sleep for days after the riots I mean, I was so coffee cracked up because they were like, I was like, you want to help me? Send me some coffee because right now I'm a non-functioning human being and I have to go to work. You know, the coffee came in. I'm like, hey, you think that I should probably be a meditation teacher? Guess what? I can't afford it. You want to you wanna fund that? And I was able to pay for that kind of stuff. I was able to pay for somebody else's yoga training under here. I was able to send somebody some money and say, I see you're having this class. Here's, yes. you know, $100. I'm sponsoring five people. Yes. You know, for us to feel yes. like, again, it's not, a, it's not a pie. If I get something, I mean, Martin, you're not going to starve. Right. You know what I mean? Like yeah. that sort of thing. To, and to have your back as a fellow instructor, right. not take away from you because I want to be seen as a martyr for mm -hmm. somebody else. Right. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. Cool. Yeah. This is um I, I might use this as my podcast for this week. <laughs> it's yeah. like a little life hack. That's good. Yeah, but but it but it's it's a lot of stuff to think about as far as things that we can do. Like I cannot stop you from being a racist. I just can't. You know, maybe something that I said influences you or whatever, but that's a decision that you have to make. So my question is, instead of me spending all my time trying to convince you how racist you are, because chances are you already know, um, what can I do literally to begin to move things forward instead of making sure I beat you over the head so that you know you're racist? Because you know you're racist. Right. <laughs> like, you know you're racist. Um, and, and to not feel like it's our job to educate people um, to spend our time things you can google that mm -hmm. you can do that but when yeah. you look at yourself in the mirror that's where the work starts it's not inboxing the black people right you know and so i i think that i think that's where we are i think that's what the community um connection thing that you did that's that's where we are because now it's like how are we we're all in this together you know everybody's affected by COVID in some way you know and now as movement teachers if we don't like the way the industry is being portrayed, how do we change the picture? Right. Yeah. 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 Now I'm thinking, because I, I hear myself talking and I'm like, you got work to do. That's good you stuff. Got work. Yeah, girl, you got work. You got work to do. Um, if I believe in what I say, there is work to do. Yes. So I'm on it. Bad. I'm on it. I appreciate you jumping on with me because I just... I was on a tangent. I sent Michelle all this stuff, and I was like, "These, these are my thoughts, and they're, they're so, they're so much more." Um, there is a conversation that, and this is the last thing I paper cut myself, and like it's burning. Um, <laughs> there, there is a conversation that Michelle referenced this morning. Your interview with Sean Gallagher mm -hmm. that I need to go back and kind of listen to. Yeah, you know. I think that there is some there's there's power in knowledge, mm -hmm. and to there are things you you want to be informed of things so that you're not a part of repeating it if you yes. know that that was part of the destruction. Right. Yeah. And so you've talked to some pretty powerful people. I would recommend that people, if you don't follow Martin, that you go and go back and actually listen to some of the the core conversations because I think people just are who they are when they talk to you. And um, we kind of we, we kind of just really get a, a feel about where people are because you can't hide who you are only for so long. Right. I I always start with that. You have to understand people like you don't have to agree with them, but get some understanding of where they're coming from. And my line of questioning with Sean was to understand where he was coming from. And if you watch it, you see he starts off starting out ready to defend himself. And then as the conversation goes on, you can see his shoulders kind of relax. Like, and he just kind of settles into the conversation because he realized that it's going to be a conversation. 
Yes. I'm not there to prove him wrong on anything. Like, we're not trying to prove someone's racist. Like, I'm just moving on from the fact that they're racist. It doesn't matter. Like, you can be yourself. Are you going to help our community or not? Okay, you can do it for your racist place. Stay there, help us, move on, or not help us, and I know who you are, and move on. Yeah. So the conversation with Sean was just that. I don't, like, I, where are you right now? Let me understand where you are right now. Yeah. And I, and I asked some clarifying questions on some really controversial things got his answer and moved on. I didn't sit there and debate with him because I'm, I'm like, what does it profit oh, me what? to prove him wrong on something or to prove, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like there was some times where I wanted to pin him down on things, but then, and then we just kind of moved on from it, right? So he, he gave me some and I just gave him some and, and we just went on with a good conversation. Yeah, conversation <sighs> is the basis of all of this. And so to the Pilates teachers that are watching, my question to you or my challenge is, where are you in the line? You know, if we're creating the funnel, where are you and are you willing to step up and say, here's where I, here's where I am. Here's what I can offer. I can't change you. I can't change you. I can't change you. But I can sure as hell show up with what I have to offer. What is that? So that we start making more of those connections. So we start having more of these conversations yes. and began to move this forward because Pilates isn't the enemy. Pilates, it isn't Pilates. the enemy. Yeah, yeah, it isn't the enemy. Yeah. So I'm toasting my, today I'm drinking ginger and lemon tea to you. Nice, there you go, it's good it's, water. It's not, it's not Patron, but you know, there you go. <laughs> and um, I'm just looking forward to what evolves from this time in, in our industry. So, so let's, see where, let's see where it goes. I'm really enjoying walking with you on this path, Tasha, and for everyone who's been yeah. watching, like, thank you so much. Like, you are our people, right? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're 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 going to we are changing things. No doubt, we're changing things. So, I shall see you when I get to click on core conversations when I'm going to work. Yes. I got you. All right, <laughs> all right. Good night, everybody. Bye.